Well, good morning, Three Pound Fishing Nation. I've got an exciting episode today. I've been wanting to make this video for so long. And uh, today, well, we've got the second live scope set up, ready to go. I got the 126 SV. We took that trip down to Cornfield Crappie Gear to get this put on the boat. I'll link that video here above so you guys can watch that. If you haven't, check it out. This is all about their side mount system right here. And we are gonna try it out for the very first time. And we've got a beautiful morning. Sun is rising. This is one of the best parts of getting up in the early in the morning. But guess what? I've never used this 126 SV yet. So we're gonna try two systems out. We're gonna check out the, the live sonar, sonar interference. A lot of people talk about that when you have two systems, do you have interference? I'm gonna show you what that looks like, possibly. Um, hey, ho heck, hopefully we don't have any, but a lot of things are gonna get packed into this episode and uh, we're gonna catch fish but I'm gonna show you the difference between the two different systems. We're gonna see if we can tell if there's actually a quality difference between them, which is gonna be cool. So a lot packed into this episode. Thanks for watching. This is gonna be a really cool episode. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies. All right, this is the first time. I am super excited. I'm actually gonna to have to Ooh, I'm gonna have to change your mounting position just so I can put my, my monitor there. I typically use that monitor. So let's talk about two live scope systems. On this boat, I have an 8616, and I also have a 126 SV. Let me show you the setup of those mounts. There's my 8616, there's my 126 SV. Here's what's gonna hold that 126 SV's pull. And of course, the transducer for the 8616 is on the trolling motor. Now I prefer it on the trolling motor, but the idea of having two is so that if you have a fishing partner, you can have him looking and searching for fish at the same time. Is it overkill? Absolutely it is up. It is incredibly overkill. So, but for tournament anglers, it's definitely become more popular to have two live scope systems in the boat. Also gives you a backup. If anything goes wrong, you always have a backup. All right, so here's the process for setting this up. A simple C clamp. Mark described this really well in his video, but basically it now can be strewn right over the boat. You can actually just then position this guy right in the, the C clamp right there. Just like that, real simple, right there. Does not get better than that, in my opinion. That is simplicity at its best and that is the setup i like it man it is solid now people are probably going to ask me about this cable so i'll just go ahead and tell you the story on the cable let's get that out of the way i have an adapter for my cable right here so my transducer right here this is the male female end of that transducer it actually then goes from here to my black box which is here that basically means that i can take it off the boat completely and it's seamless and it looks like it's not even there so i like that because at the end of the day 90 percent of the time you're probably not going to use your second live scope but this also means that I have a choice now when I go out fishing, if I want to use the side mount, I can use the side mount or I can use the trolling motor mount. So let's, let's put it to work. Let's see, let's actually click in this 126 SV. All right, so we take off the rubber guys. This guy should plug right here. And that should be in. There's your mount. And there she is, powering up. So now that is a, is a uh, there's so many things to talk about today, folks. This is gonna be a live scope episode for all live scope episodes, in my opinion. Look at the setup we got going on here. But that is it. All right, guys, we are live for the first time ever. It's totally cool uh, to have them both running now. Um, very cool very excited um 
and I can tell you right off the bat, you know, the actually the 126 SV is really super clear. Super clear. And uh, this mount, I have to, I'm going to brag on Mark. Um, this thing is extremely sturdy. Um, I can tell you that I was going about three plus miles an hour and this thing wasn't even budging. It just feels like a rock. I mean, you talk about American made quality. This is without doubt the best hand system I've ever, side pole mount system I have ever seen. Um, well built, looks pretty, and very impressed. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, that's, that's my legit, that's legit. Uh, the 126 SV is beautiful. It will forever be my number one. I think that is the best bang for your buck if you do not need to do videos. And I love, of course, my 126, uh, I'm sorry, my 8616 right here. But I gotta tell you, I'm liking this image right here. I don't know if it's the difference between the transducers or what, but I'm pretty, I mean, there's the same pile of fish. Now, Let's talk about, let me get you guys in a better, I should, it should be pretty good actually right here. Let's talk about feedback. People always talk about feedback between transducers and I have seen it. So look at these, the, how we're pointed, we're pointed, both are pointed straight away right there. I know this is going to get a little bouncy guys, but right there. Now, now watch my screen up here. If I turn this handle over to it, do you see the flicker? Hopefully you guys saw that. So when we start crossing the beams, all right, so there's, I just saw it down here on this screen for sure. See the flicker? There's the flicker. That's it, or that's the feedback. Now I gotta admit, it's not nearly as bad. There's the flicker up here. It's not nearly as bad as I think it once was. Um, There's the flicker right there when they cross beams. So I'm gonna say, uh, you know, really, you know, feedback between the two sonars crossing. Um, I don't think it's that bad. It's really not that bad. I'm incredibly impressed by the picture of the 126 SV. Um, you know, let's uh, let's just change the. You know, the settings are almost identical. Uh, I think the picture on a 126 SV is actually slightly brighter. A little bit more of a feedback, for sure. Um, we're going to go to a pile now. Alright, so that's totally cool. There's the pile. Okay, actually pretty, a really good picture off my, my 8616, right there. Now you can see the same pile right there. You know, that's stretched out a little bit. We're gonna bring it in. This is really a lot to, to handle here and with okay, so that picture looks pretty good. Now if you've noticed I have switched to the the amber color. I'm getting away from that green color. I think the pictures just are really they really pop with this new amber. I don't know if they made a modification to it, to be quite honest with you. But I can assure you that it is pretty good. Now you can see the feedback right there. You see the feedback guys? That can really, you know, start to bother you. But again, if you have two systems on your boat. Really, you're not looking at the same thing at the same time. At least you shouldn't be, but perhaps, who knows, maybe, you know. But I I have to say that I'm just trying to see which one I like better. So there's that picture. I think the target separation on this 126 is a little bit better. So I'll probably change the transducers over today just to see if it's a transducer issue. But I can make that go away up here just by turning the okay so then I'm gonna go around here and look at this guy and I mean that's pretty tight so here we go this is it this is the system right here it doesn't I mean this is an absolute overkill system don't uh, you know but as a tournament angler you have a lot of this stuff going on and um, you can value every aspect of it if I if I were to get used to get rid of one unit it would be this guy down here I think that the mapping on the Garmin is fantastic 
you can see it right here you can actually have your live so this is the you know the look of the whole system if you do not need and you want a big if you do not need to video your things i'm going to highly recommend the 126 sv don't forget about ptg and grenada they are my hookup for all my electronics and all that great stuff um if you do then i highly recommend the 8616 do i think there's a quality difference in terms of what you can physically see um i'm gonna say no i really don't i actually talked to garmin about that and they think by naked eye you probably can't tell the quality difference between an 8600 series 8400 series versus a 126 sv it's important because you know a lot of people are gonna they want the best of the best and if you're not gonna video 126 is your best bet now if you want a bigger screen a 16 a 22 a 26 those crazy sizes you do have to go up to the 84 8600 series correct me if i'm wrong on that but i'm pretty sure i'm right either way if you're in the bucket of if you're in that bucket of getting either one of those units you're in a really you know you can't go wrong either way i love the easy on and off of the 126 sv though so if i'm not videoing and i think 12 inch is a perfect size screen i think um the 126 SV is perfect. And you get the mapping so you can eliminate that, that small hummingbird unit up front. So again, check out PTG with all your uh, you know electronics. They're awesome. Trolling motor there, they will hook you up. So we're gonna put some fish in the boat and then we are probably gonna modify these transducers just to see if that's the difference between the 126 and the 8616 because i see a slight difference i don't know if it's just in my mind but i'm you know i'm always wanting to better the system to its full potential so let's do that let's get some fish real quick oh there's our first fish good fish too man you gotta love it folks Look at that, that's a, that is a great fish. And using the side mount from Cornfield Fishing Gear. Cornfield Fishing Gear, man, they got it going on. This could be one of their best products I've ever seen. All right, I think it's equally important to show people how to stow this away. In my case, all I'm gonna do is undo this knob it rotates I take this guy up real quick and simple and then I can loosen this guy up and throw him over to the side that's it that's all I would do to move from spot to spot that's at how that's how easy it is and this thing is just brick is, is is built like a brick you know what it's just so sturdy crazy now this is the full review of this side mount system and I can tell you this thing is sturdy it's so sturdy I've, I've gone 3.3 miles an hour with the trolling motor I have and this this boat boogies now at three plus miles an hour and this thing is not wavering at all it's amazing all right so we just moved to a new location all we're having to do is swing this arm out good stuff pull in making sure it's with the black part right here this snaps right in and that is that is ridiculously easy gosh dang one thing they always people always talk about on my guide trips is you don't use spot lock during when you fish and I go no I only use spot lock when I'm changing a bait or have to walk to the other side of the boat for some reason for something else spot lock is you know so we're going to try it here because i know a lot of people like to sit back in the wind and we have kind of a windy day here today um, they want to sit back and just you know keep the, the spot lock on and there's another one so yeah you know it's it's working you know that's why i say every you know fishing's fun because there's so many different ways to do it and uh you just have to spend time on the water to perfect the way that you want to do it good fish right there good solid eater okay again now i am using uh uh the paddle tail the three pound fishing jigs 
if you haven't tried out the jigs, folks, you need to try out the jigs. The jigs will last you a lifetime. You literally will have to lose that jig. That's how good they are. That is no joke. Now, I have to admit, sitting here with the wind and my trolling motor's doing all the work over by itself, this is, this is very comfortable. Not having to worry about working the trolling motor, it's doing its spot lock and I'm just catching fish. Folks, that's gonna end it. This is a uh, kind of an eye-opening first experience for three pound fishing. This is a full review of the side mount there from uh, Cornfield Fishing Gear, another good eater. Um, double thumbs up. Yes, they're a sponsor of three pound fishing, but I'm gonna tell you right now, that is extremely high quality. And um, it gets the three pound fishing stamp of approval, no doubt about it. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies.